What is up, everybody? Welcome into Saturday with Smoltz, where every single Saturday, the Hall of Famer from the Atlanta Braves joins me. Got a lot to talk about today, including the comments made by George Kirby after uh, after his start last week, where he came out and basically said he didn't think he should have gone back out for that seventh inning where he ended up giving up the game tying Homer. Uh, it was through six innings and 90 pitches also came out afterwards and said he shouldn't have said that. And that's not the way he actually feels. And the frustration was involved in those comments, but uh, going to talk to John Smoltz about his thoughts with those comments. And also the Atlanta Braves, uh, the Braves have wrapped up pretty much everything there is to wrap up aside from the number one seed right now. But how difficult is it to to go into the playoffs when you haven't been playing for anything lately? And what do the Braves do? How do the Braves go about what they're what they're dealing with right now? They're in. They're gonna have a one. They're go, they're gonna have a top seed. They're gonna have a buy. So how do you manage uh, the rest of the season if you're the Atlanta Braves? Also, Mike Trout. The uh, uh, word came out that the Angels would potentially be willing to trade him if he wanted to be traded. Uh, that was a report uh, from Bob Nightingale in USA Today, but a lot to talk about with John Smoltz today. This one is going to be a lot of fun. So without further ado, let's welcome him in now. Five ball out of the track at the wall. It's gone. Home run. Turns on a ball. Deep right field. Out. What a game. What a moment. All right, and I am pumped to welcome him in now, the Hall of Famer, John Smoltz. John, how are we doing this week? The scenery looks great. Where are you? I am in Bedminster, New Jersey, at a phenomenal golf course, Trump at Bedminster. So enjoying the beautiful day and uh, obviously playing a little golf. So I want to start this week with uh, George Kirby, a uh, very talented pitcher, having a fantastic year for the Seattle Mariners. and made some comments after his most recent start or his start last week that were, it just kind of sent the world into a, a, a frenzy in terms of, well, uh, for those that don't know the the comments, he came out of the, or when he came out of the game after giving up a game, tying Homer post game, he voiced his frustrations about being sent back out for the seventh inning saying he didn't feel like he should be out there. And uh, yeah, the, the world just was, well, that would have never happened back in the day. And why would he say that? And he's not a gamer. John, when you heard those comments from George Kirby, uh, what, what were your thoughts about it? You know, I, you wish you had a 24 hour rule. I, I was victim of it early uh, 24 hours after frustrating loss. You got to give somebody a benefit of the doubt. He probably knows now he shouldn't have said that <laughs> uh, doesn't come across very well. It doesn't set well with your teammates, certainly your manager. And I would just say 24 hour rule, uh, give him some grace. Um, I don't think he'll make any comments like that, but on the flip side, this is the byproduct of what we're doing. I mean, this is the reward system. So you can't blame him in one regard to even think like that, but to say it out loud, that's the mistake. And he'll learn from it. I made mistakes. I said things about the fans that you can't say. And I learned early on in my career that was a mistake. <laughs> he did he, exactly like you said, within 24 hours, he, the next day was like, yeah, I didn't, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, I'm a gamer. I want the ball. I want to be out there. And you know, the point I made about it is I think there's a lot of conversations that happen in a dugout that fans don't know about. And there are times, you know, pitchers sometimes know when they're done and, and, and that's okay. And I think more so it happens today. And I, I look, I would love to see pitchers go deeper into games and, and longer, but nature of the beast, the, this day and age, when guys are trying to throw a hundred and spin the crap out of the baseball, that's not really realistic, but I, I just think he should have, I, I think in hindsight's 2020, but have that conversation in the dugout with Scott service and not air it out publicly after the game. And uh, I think that was the mistake of just saying publicly. Well, the, other, the other thing, the other thing really quick, they were short in their bullpen that night. So sometimes yeah. when you're in a playoff play, you got to be able to do the things and just suck it up. And that's what he'll learn. He'll learn that that is a moment in time. He didn't make a pitch uh, and he'll learn. I promise you that uh, on the, on the other side of the league, the Atlanta Braves, speaking of playoff pushes there, there isn't one for the Braves and they are in, they're in the playoffs. Uh, the division is theirs as well. 
And as a guy that was a, a part of the team that won 14 straight, uh, I, I want to talk about that a little bit. Is it at all difficult or how do the Braves manage? It's the middle of September. And really the only thing for the Braves to play for is the one seed, but they're in the playoffs. They know they're in the playoffs. And is it difficult for the Braves? And how do you manage going into the playoffs, firing on all cylinders when you're going to play a few weeks of baseball that what you're not really playing for a ton? Well, the good news is they've got a lot of individual greatness going on. So that continues. They play every day. They're not buying into the narrative that things are uh, got to rest, got to be tired. You know, all those things they're not buying in. They're not talking publicly. It's why they're having the best year in baseball. And I think it's the way to go about it. Look, they're going to get a week's rest as soon as the season's over. So you can get a couple days once they clinch the first record, number one seed, and then get them playing that last weekend because you're going to lose about five days. And teams that have the best record are going to lose how to are going to learn how to navigate those days off. You want the best record under no circumstances. Do you want to go in by the skin of your teeth thinking that that's going to be the formula? So teams will learn the new playoff system, how to rest players, how to get ready for that next series after a team has already used their two best or three best starters to get to you. What are your uh, just thinking out loud about talking about the playoffs and going in and the Braves are going to have a week off. What are your thoughts on the, the current setup and a team getting a buy baseball, is such players are creatures of habit, right? You're playing 162 days and not many or 162 games over the course of like 180 days. I mean, you're playing every single day. I mean, do you want a week off, especially as a hitter? It just feels like having that time where you're not in the box facing live game pitching. I don't know. I feel like it's difficult. And my mind goes back to the 06 Tigers and, and those Tigers teams that got in and swept the swept the A's and the ALCS and then end up losing in the World Series and just looking like, hey, we had too much time off and we were a little rusty. But teams will learn how to deal with that. You should have a huge advantage facing a team that has to use their two best pitchers yeah. just to get to you. So I think that's the one thing they're going to learn is that advantage is going to come out and play out in the in the teams that get the best record. Otherwise, there's no advantage to win 110 games. There really isn't. And I think that's the big thing that teams will learn in this new playoff system, how to set up their rotation, how to keep their hitters fresh. But I would rather face a team that's coming in burning and churning, even if they get hot, than a team that basically gets to rest like I do. So I think the Braves are going to be fine. I think the Dodgers will be fine. And when this plays out in the next 10 years, you're going to see more of the better teams advancing than we saw last year. One team that I don't think is fine is the angels. And it's just been a rough go of it. And we talked a lot about the, they're going for it with Shohei. And was it the right decision? I mean, anybody can look back and say it wasn't, but they went for it and you got to respect it with the last potentially couple of months of having one of the greatest, if not the greatest player we've ever seen. But a report did come out over the last few days that uh, whether it's it, whether it's true or not, but it came out about Mike Trout and the Angels potentially willing to trade him if Mike Trout were willing to be traded. And you know, when you hear that, what 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 do you think if you're in the shoes of Mike Trout, where this organization risked it all to 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 go all in, and now the farm system is depleted for 30 days of these players that ended up getting put on waivers? If you're Mike Trout and you're signed there long term, and a and, and, and the team is willing to trade you, what do you do? I think he holds all the cards. It's up to him. And if he wants to go somewhere, more power to him. I think he's in a position of strength and not of weakness. And, you know, Mike Trout is a, a little bit different than most superstars. His personality is a little bit different. He may want to stay there. And I think if he, he holds the cards, I think the Angels will, will honor whatever it is that they and he wants to do. Yep, absolutely. And uh, it's going to be... It's going to be quite the off season for, you know, we're, we're looking at a world in which potentially Shohei Otani and Mike Trout in the same year are, uh, are gone from the angels, but yeah, the organization, it is, it is amazing to think about that two of the greatest that the game has ever seen. So uh, John, thank you so much for joining me on the golf course. As always, I appreciate it. You're in between rounds right now, about to head back out there. So good luck, my friend. My pleasure. Thanks. All right, John. See ya. All right. Thanks again to John Smoltz for joining me from the golf course in the middle of two rounds. Uh, always appreciated and always, a, always a lot of fun when, when he hops on and 
Yeah, definitely needed to talk to him about the George Kirby comments because it's just a different, it's a different world these days. And uh, I like the 24 hour rule. There's, there's a lot of truth to that. Don't immediately go to the media and say what's on your mind after you're frustrated when, when, when you come out and have given up a lead and 24 hour rule. I like it a lot, but thank you all for listening to this Saturday episode of Saturday with Smoltz. Make sure you're subscribed, following wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple, Spotify. We're also on all social media, including YouTube, where you can watch every single thing we do at Flippin' Bats Pod for all of them. But that does it for this Saturday episode. Enjoy the weekend, everybody. And until next time, this has been another episode of Flippin' Bats. Peace.